Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to continue with our series of iOS XR and in this video we're going to take a look at uh, protocol ISIS and we're going to configure ISIS in iOS XR using XRV as we have been doing throughout the series and we're going to use this topology where you have four PE routers and two RRs and we're going to go ahead and configure ISIS in iOS XR. So first of all, uh, let's start with PE1. We're going to go through the structure of uh, iOS XR and in, in ISIS and uh, going to configure first and then we're going to take a look at some of the details. So in Cisco iOS XR, we're going to start routing process. In this case, is going to be 100. We're going to set the IS type to level 2. That's uh, our task requirement. And then we're going to set a net address. Followed by that, we're going to go in the address family IPv4, unicast. And globally, at the top of the hierarchy, we're going to set the metric style to wide. Then we're going to go under the interface. Two interfaces that are going to participate in the ISIS and enable address family IPv4 unicast. In iOS XR, you start the routing process and then you go to a specific interface and then enable the address family that is going to be used for the protocol. For the reachability purpose, we're going to enable ISIS on interface loopback zero as well. At the end of all that, we're going to commit the config. <laughs> With a bit of adjustment in the screen, let's start again and we're going to take a look at the running config of ISIS. <laughs> on the PE1. So just to recap on the structure, um, that's our main task today. So, uh, you know, if we come from iOS background, it's a little different uh, configuring a protocol like OSPF and, uh, and ISIS. We're gonna, we see that the routing process is enabled, uh, followed by you have the type, which is um, level two, only net address is set. Just in the globally, we have enabled matrix style wide and then interface loopback zero has address family IPv4 unicast enabled for ISIS and similarly for interface gig 0000 and 0001 are enabled for address family IPv4 unicast. Next move on to PE2 going to enable a routing process of ISIS and set the IS type to level 2 only. Set the net address. Two here represent the loopback IP address. We're going to go under the address family IPv4 and set the metric style to white. We're going to then jump on to the interface level and going to enable ISIS on the interfaces required. In this case, gig 0000 and 0001 and do back zero. We're going to set it passive so that it does not take um, participate in the ISIS hello process we're going to commit and end the config just quickly take a look at the running config of ISIS similar structure again obviously routing process is enabled we have the net address matrix style is wide we have set the loopback as passive and enable ISIS on both gig interfaces towards the core. Next, we're going to repeat the same process on PE3. As I said in my last lesson, I like to use a process and steps for the config. So I always use the same steps for the config. So I repeat them over and over again. So the students get used to steps of doing config 
that way do you do not forget any steps and it's easy to complete the config on a larger topology especially in ccie exams where you have dozens of routers and you have to do config on them at the same time so if you follow a system and steps you will not forget certain things so again we're going to set the loopback interface to passive set the address family ipv4 unicast commit the config and and then quickly take a look at the running config so it's a process that i use to go through each step in same order and the verification in same order next is pe4 same process again a routing process isis 100 is type level 2 only setting the net address under address family ipv4 enable the matrix style wide go under the interfaces to be enabled for isis and set the address family in this case ipv4 and finally configure interface loopback 0 ensure that is passive enable address family ipv4 unicast and commit the config so going through the same process we're gonna again at the end take a look at running config this is the config part of it later on we're gonna go through a verification process and how to verify using various show and debug commands but at the time of config we're just going to take a look at quickly after the config to ensure that the config structure is correct now we're going to configure rr1 and rr2 for isis so these are the two routers have three gig interfaces towards the core first of all we're going to take a look at rr1 same again i know the repetition is it can be a little bit boring but uh, i don't want to use notepad so i want you to do the config as many times as possible i want to show on every router all the step steps of the config so that it becomes second nature so we're going to configure the routing process set the address net address enable the matrix style go under the interfaces and enable ipv4 unicast Set the loop back to passive and finally commit the config. And as a final step, we're going to take a look at running config just to ensure that we have not missed anything. Fantastic. We have got <laughs> the routing process, but we see in this case we have three interfaces enabled for ISIS instead of two. So we have the net address and three gig interfaces are enabled loopback is there it's passive and enabled for ipv4 great so let's let's move on to rr2 and process this, uh, repeat the same process again so con we go under the config mode as normal as we do in ios we run the routing process we enable the routing process i should say and because we're using only is type level 2 so from the top of the hierarchy we start the config requirements as we go down so net address is set for the is process so it's going to be the number two step 
and then because we're using matrix style wide and on a global unicast ipv4 so that's going to be the step number three and then followed by that all the interfaces that required isis protocol enabled for ipv4 unicast And again, the last step is to quickly take a look at the running config of the process. Great. Now we're going to start a proper verification process and I'm going to go through all the steps that I use for verification. For any routing protocol, the first thing you check is the interfaces required. Is the protocol enabled on those? So we're going to use show ISIS interfaces brief. Brief output always gives you a quick indication if the protocol is enabled on the interfaces. Before we go and troubleshoot other areas of adjacencies, etc., we need to ensure that the protocol is enabled as required. So we see that on the three interfaces and on two interfaces and loopback, the ISI is enabled. Now we're going to take a look if the adjacencies are formed and we run show ISIS adjacency command, we see that we have two adjacencies, PE2, and we have the adjacency via the interface. We can see in the next field, we can see the subnetwork point of attachment, SNPA, hold times, and etc. and state is up. At the end, we notice that the BFT for IPv4 and IPv6 is not enabled. That's going to be a later task in one of our later video to enable BFT for various routing protocols. Next is a routing table. So let's take a look at the rib and um, show route ISIS. We see that the IS type level 2 routes are there. We have the loopback IP address of PE2 which is 10.0.0.2 slash 32, the admin distance and metric to reach the route, the next stop, and via interface gig 0000. The loopback of PE 3, 4, 5, RR1 and 2 are there. And it's uh, just <laughs> good to recap that uh, all the routes are available in the rib. And that uh, you would um, I would probably do at the end and make sure all everything else is okay then you can check the rib and ensure that all the required routes are in in the rib and then we're going to now move on to uh, we can use show ISIS interface and that gives us a little bit more details about the ISIS interface here we will see in addition to uh, the brief um, output where we had the indication that ISIS was enabled for a particular interface here. We can see a lot more details. For example, if you had um, authentication and etc. enabled in future, you can use that. But here we're going to take a look at um, the interface and we see that the BFT is not enabled. It's a level 2 only. The circuit type is there. We have the um, IPv4 uh, unicast topology at the bottom and we can see that it's enable um, we see that the forwarding address and uh, the prefix and etc so layer, layer one layer two matrix basically and the topology information so it's always good to uh, take a quick, quick look at um, show ISIS interfaces for more detailed output of various uh, elements of ISIS that you're looking for in particular. And later on in the series, we're going to go through some of the more details of uh, various options in ISIS. 
and now we're gonna just uh, go through and repeat the process on uh, remaining routers uh, so we can have a look at PE2 and similarly show ISIS interface brief show ISIS adjacency and finally we're gonna take a look at rib so the idea of verification is that you have steps to verify like we had in config we follow the same steps in same order so like for example, once you are outside the practice and we, you run to a lab situation, you have certain set on steps for verification. So you don't forget anything in the middle. Next is PE3 and we're going to repeat the same verifications again. Look at the interfaces and adjacencies and rib. Fantastic, that's good. So let's go to P4 and check the interfaces enabled for ISIS. We take a look and they look good. Next, we're going to take a look at adjacency, see if the adjacencies are formed. Great. And the rib table, let's take a look and we see that all the loopback IP address is there. So we jump on to RR1. Let's take a look and we see that the interfaces are enabled for ISIS and uh, next we take a look at the adjacencies. Fantastic. All three are up. We take a look at the rib by using show route ISIS. We have the loopback IP addresses received. So the finally the um, RR2. we have the ISIS enable adjacency is up with all three interfaces and we take a look at rib and we have all the loopback IP addresses in the rib now we're going to verify the reachability to all the loopback IP addresses um, from PE1 so we're gonna jump on to PE1 and see if we can reach PE2, 3, 4 RR1 and RR2. So let's jump on to PE1 and uh, just verify the reachability to loopback IP addresses. So we're going to try and reach 10.0.0.2, PE3, PE4, PE5, sorry, RR1 and then RR2. Wonderful. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you like it, please subscribe to the channel and leave your comments. I look forward to see you in the next video.